Okay, so I'm going to show you how to stitch the bear or dog, depending on how you look at it, pocket pal, the pig pocket pal, and the plain pocket pal. This one has a gusset. The pig and the bear um, are just flat and both are stitched the same. So they will actually share one video tutorial. Um, this one is stitched a little bit differently, so I will do this one separately. Hi, I'm Jennifer with True North Leatherworks, and I am here to show you how to sew our pocket pals. We have three different versions. This is the plain one, and then we have a bear or dog, depending on what you want to use it as, and then we also have a pig. So I will go through, the bear and the pig are sewn the same, so I will show sewing how to sew one of these. I will show two different viewpoints so that you can have a better uh, view of what I'm doing. And then I will also show how to sew the plain bag because there is a little bit of a difference in how the seam is sewn, so I'll have a separate one for this. Okay, now we are. I'm going to show you how to do the plain pocket pal. This does not have a little animal, cute little animal face on it, but it still makes a cute little pouch. The thing that makes this one different is it's got a little bit of a gusset going on. So when we stitch it, it will make it more three dimensional rather than the flat um, of the other ones. So we're going to pull out our leather and our thread and our needle. Just pull the tape off the needle. That's just so it's easy to find and doesn't get lost. And then I'm going to unloop my thread. Why is it now back? Okay, so now that we have our thread and our needle, we're going to thread. You have two pieces of thread, one for each side of your little pocket pal. And you are going to thread the, need, the, the needle with your thread. And then you're going to poke the point of your needle through your thread two times. This will allow you to lock your thread onto your needle so it doesn't slide off. Okay, so we like that. Okay, now because this one's more three-dimensional, I'm not going to snap it up first. What we are going to do is find our top two holes. There's pre-punched holes along each, along the sides. So we are going to find the top one on this side, then we will find the top one on this side. Okay, they, they are lined up properly, so you just need to make sure you start with the top on both sides. Then we are going to pull our thread almost all the way through, leave a little bit of tail there. And then we are going to go to the next hole on the back. You want to make sure that you're consistent with where you're going in and out, that it's always from the same side that you just came out, and then you go in, because otherwise you're going to be crossing um, over the sides and it's not going to look as neat. So, we're just going to go down the row of holes. And you can see that as we're getting closer to the bottom, it's a little bit harder, it's wanting to do that. So you will kind of have to play with it a little bit to get it lined up properly. And we're just going to keep going. Make sure that you keep your thread pulled through fairly tightly. You don't want it super loose. If it's super loose, you will run out of thread um, and it won't be a good tight seam either. But at the same time, if you pull too tightly, then it will make everything pucker up and not look as nice. Okay, 
and getting to the bottom. So I've only got a few holes left. You can see I'm kind of pushing in with my thumb to make sure everything's lined up properly. Oh, that's a little loose. I'm going to tighten that one. Okay, I've got two holes left. Okay, so this is my bottom hole on the back and my bottom hole on the front. And if you need to, you can go out and then back in like this. This one's a little awkward. And then I am going to try to line up my seam as evenly as possible and tighten that. And then I'm going to turn around. So you can see how it's nice every other in and out, in and out. Now we're going to fill in the blanks so that the threads are in all the blank spots where you can still see the leather. So on the front, I am going to go back in and out. And as I turn from going down the seam and up and then turn to go up the seam, I'm going to make sure that I pull this one nice and tightly so that this part is nice and snug. Otherwise that gusset's going to be really loose and anything that you, anything small that you put in here will fall right out because of how loose. It's already got a little bit of a hole there. You don't want it any looser than it already is. So now I am just going to go up the seam. Going in and out of each hole. Now there are other ways of stitching this. Um, I prefer a two needle method, but for making this as easy as possible, we are just doing a one needle method. Um, and you could do different stitches as well, but this is just a simple basic stitch that's easy to do. If you do run into any problems as you're stitching this, uh, feel free to email me, jen, J-E-N, at truenorthleatherworks.com and uh, ask me your questions and I will be happy to help you. Okay, so now I am coming up to my last hole. I'm going to poke that through. And pull that snugly. Okay, it looks like I should have made these threads a little bit longer. Okay, after I snip it, I'm going to go like that. Okay, so I've got short threads here. I'm going to take a lighter. You use a big one, a little one, whatever you have on hand. I'm going to light those and I'm going to very carefully press on that. So that we're good there. Okay, so we have one side done, and now we'll move to the other side. Hit stop. Okay, so now I will sew the other seam on the plain pocket towel with a, the camera above me so you can see what I'm doing from here. Now on this side, I started the threads on the front. If you don't like this right here on the front, um, you can start it on the back. So that's actually what we're gonna do over here on this side. I am going to thread my needle. Um, poke my the tip of the needle through the thread twice, and then that locks locks my needle in right there. Okay, so I'm going to start on the back side. On that top hole, you can see there's no holes there. So this is my top one, and I'm going to go through on this side. And 
Now, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting through that first one, so I'm going to go through that from the front and just poke a quick hole through that hole just to make sure that it's open. There we go, and now my needle's going through there a lot easier. I'm going to pull my thread through, making sure it stays on this side. So I want a little bit of a tail there. And then I'm going to just find the next hole in the line on the front and the back. that nice and snug. I'm going to, you can see I am pushing those together so that my seam is lined up, my, the side of the leather is lined up. Then I'm just going to find the next hole. You can see it's loosening up. I do want to tighten that. If you let your threads loosen up too much, then uh, you won't have a nice snug seam and whatever you put in might fall right back out. And it won't look very pretty either. Now if you need to, you can see I'm wiggling the, the needle through the holes. These are larger needles, which makes them easier to hold, but means that it's a little bit harder to get them through these holes. If you need to, you can use a pair of pliers to help you uh, pull the needle through. And we're just going to go in and out. You can see that it's in, out, in, out. Now I am flipping this back and forth a lot, trying to make sure that you can see what I'm doing with the camera. That's not necessary. If you get it in a position that you like, you can just keep it there. But I just want to make it so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so right here, having a little bit more trouble getting it through that hole. So I came out between the layers of leather. So I am actually going to go back there. There we go, that's my hole. You don't wanna come out between because then you're not gonna end up with a nice, neat seam. Now remember this one has that gusset here, so it's not gonna line up as nicely as we get to the bottom. Kind of shove it in there like that. That'll make it a little bit easier. I'm keeping my thread nice and snug. So I've just got a couple left. I want to make sure that that stays in there. See, we've got that there. Nice seam, our little gusset right there. We're going to turn it over, make sure that's nice and snug, and then we're going to work our way back up the side, filling in where we have these, le these uh, the leather showing, 
so that we have a nice row of stitching all the way up. So we're just going to work our way back up. So you can see I'm going in and out. And like I said, all the flip-flopping you don't need to do. This is just so that you can see what I'm doing. holes left. Okay, so now I'm up to that top hole. I'm going to pull that tail to the side and then I'm going to go through the top hole to the front and then I'm going to go down to that second hole that I've already stitched through to go down right there. So I've got the tail on the top one and my needle coming in the second one. Okay, now I'm going to take my little thread snips or scissors, whatever you have on hand. I have short little tails. I take my lighter, remember parental supervision and or help on this one going to melt my wax thread ends and just push down on them quickly. You could burn yourself, so be super careful, okay? And now we have two seams on our little pocket pouch. Pocket pal. Okay. There we go. So there you have it. You have hopefully stitched your pocket pal, whether it be the bear or dog, whichever you're calling it, or the pig, or the plain one. Um, if you ran into any problems, please feel free to email me at jen at truenorthleatherworks.com. If you are interested in doing more leatherworking, I do have a Leatherwork 101 course. It is a course aimed at teens, but it is also appropriate for adults as well. I send all the tools and materials needed to make the practice exercises and projects in the, in the course. And I have video tutorials that walk you through each lesson showing how to do the practice exercises and the projects. Um, it is a, an easy way to try a new skill with very little effort on the part of your parents because everything is provided to you other than a lighter because it's illegal to send these things through the mail and I could get in trouble for that. Everything else is shipped to you and you don't have to track anything down or wonder if you're getting the right tools or the right materials. If you are if you're interested in learning more about the Leatherwork 101 course, go to www.truenorthleatherworks.school and you can find out more about the course. You can register and start at any time and work through at your own schedule um, and your own availability. So it's nice and flexible, and it's a great opportunity to learn a new skill. Thanks, and have a great day.